My brothers and sisters, every year we hear the same verses of the Quran regarding Ramadan being recited. And in those verses, Allah Almighty tells us, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Do you know what that means? It means in order to achieve taqwa. And what is taqwa? Taqwa is piety or the closeness to Allah or the consciousness of Allah or the connection with Allah in a way that you stay away from that which displeases him and you do that which he has ordained. What's the whole purpose of this? The whole purpose of it is when you close your eyes and you pass away, you will go to the right place. May Allah Almighty grant us Jannatul Firdaus. If you look at Allah Almighty, when he prescribes fasting, he is doing something to us. Fasting is prescribed by Allah, but it does not benefit Allah. It benefits us. In fact, it has a lot of health benefits. So many that medicine only discovery, is only discovering them as time is passing. So subhanallah, if you look, Allah says, Ya amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you in the way it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you achieve taqwa, the correct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what has Allah prepared for those who have taqwa? Are you following what I'm asking? What has Allah prepared for those who have taqwa? In another place in the Quran, Allah Almighty says, "U'iddat lil muttaqin." He has prepared something for the people who have taqwa. What was he talking about? He is talking about Jannatul Firdaus. Wasari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Arduha samawatu wal ardu u'iddat lil muttaqeen. Allah says, make haste in seeking forgiveness. Don't delay seeking the forgiveness of Allah because you don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know how long you will live on earth and when you're going to go back to Allah. So don't delay seeking the forgiveness of Allah. One of the traps of shaitan is to make you think, I'm young, I'm okay. I will seek the forgiveness of Allah. When I'm a little bit older, I can change. My brothers and sisters, we should learn to develop ourselves from a young age. It is a bonus to develop yourself at a young age. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about people who will be shaded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And he says, a person who grew up in the obedience of Allah. When they were young and they were growing, they chose not to go to the avenues of displeasure, but they chose a good path. They will achieve a special shade on the day of judgment. So Allah says, Make haste towards seeking forgiveness. Wasari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. Make haste towards seeking forgiveness or the forgiveness from your Lord. Wa jannah. And make haste towards paradise. Don't delay in your preparation for the eternal life. Because you don't know how long you're going to remain on this particular earth. So Allah says, U'iddat lil muttaqeen. It has been prepared for those who have taqwa. And if you go to Ramadan, Allah says, we are telling you to fast so that you can achieve taqwa. Do you see the connection? On one hand, Allah says, we've prepared paradise for those with taqwa. Then Allah says, if you want taqwa, you need to fast in Ramadan. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Subhanallah. It's amazing. So what is this connection? It is because Ramadan is a habit building month. You and I always want to get up early to go to work, right? We want to go to work and work hard. How many of us want to get up early for Salatul Fajr? It's not easy. It is not easy. You have to build the habit and get used to it. In order to build a habit, you have to push yourself. You have to become conscious of time, become conscious of things that are happening around you. You need to know what's going on and what you want and what you have to achieve. Without that, you are not going to go far. So to build a habit, Allah says, Ayyaman ma'dudat. Ramadan is only a fixed number of days. Allah says, Allah wants you to complete 
the exact time. What is the time? One lunar month. One lunar month, if you discipline yourself and you push yourself, Allah will help you to build your habits, inshallah, in a good way. So you pushed yourself to get up early. Many people, mashallah, they fast because it's Ramadan. I'm fasting. I've seen some social experiments that people have done in some Western countries. They see a Muslim and they say, are you a Muslim? Says, yes. Okay. Are you fasting? Yes, I'm fasting. Okay. Would you have a bite from my apple? No, I won't. I give you $500. No, I won't. I'll give you a million dollars. No, I won't. And the person, when you look at them, they might not look like a sheikh. They look like ordinary public. Even if you give me 10 million or a hundred million, I'm not going to take a bite of the apple because I'm a Muslim and I'm fasting. Subhanallah. Where did the power come from? Wallahi, it's a connection with Ramadan and it's a connection with Allah. Congratulations. May Allah make us more conscious of it. We don't put anything in our mouths. Even little children want to fast. So Allah is helping you to develop your habit. Learn to control. Learn to control everything. What do you need to control in Nahari Ramadan? In, in the daylight hours of Ramadan, you need to control your food, your drink. You need to control your intimacy with your halal spouse. If you are married, you are not allowed to be intimate during the daylight hours of Ramadan. Why? <laughs> Habit building, discipline, taqwa, connection with Allah. If Allah says do, I do. If Allah says do not do, I do not do. It's okay. That's it. I'm happy. Because I know deep down Allah wants to polish me and shine me and make me the best human being, the best person here, the best person in the hereafter, or at least I won't regret because I will earn the mercy of Allah and the mercy of Allah will take me to Jannatul Firdaus. Let me give you one quick example. When a person stays away from food and drink and permissible intimacy, meaning from their spouse as well, during the daylight hours of Ramadan, do you know that if the person is not going to be conscious of what they are saying, they could be wasting the whole reward because then your habit building is not complete. So you are fasting, mashallah. You have stayed away from food and drink, alhamdulillah. The hadith says there are so many people who fast. They achieve nothing from their fast besides hunger and thirst. Do you know why? Because they don't care. You didn't pray. Prayer is another pillar of Islam. You are fulfilling one and not fulfilling another one. How can that happen? Similarly, if you swear and you abuse and you deceive and you lie and you cheat and you say bad words with your mouth, you are diminishing the reward of your fast because you won't be able to achieve taqwa. That whole purpose is being defeated. Allah says, you know what? the reward that you are supposed to get is diminished. And that's why we stood in Salatul Taraweeh tonight. But if you are not going to be conscious of the other rules and regulations that Allah has placed upon you, it's a sacred month. Learn to control yourself. If you're not going to learn to control yourself regarding other things, what did you achieve by standing in Taraweeh? Besides getting tired and losing sleep. So the hadith tells us some people in their standing, they achieve nothing. My brothers and sisters in Ramadan, many people say, okay, the month is coming. I'm going to stop all my bad habits. When Ramadan is finished, I will pick up again, right? Many people, they have their girlfriend, astaghfirullah, some haram relation, a'udhu billah. Alhamdulillah, when Ramadan comes, they say, astaghfirullah, a'udhu billah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa. This is Ramadan, I'm not going to do. But when the moon of Eid is seen, come on, did you not build your habit? Allah gave you an opportunity to control yourself, to reflect with Allah, to ponder over the Quran, to connect with a lot of, you need to say, Alhamdulillah, my life has changed. Now, I'm no longer going to go into my bad ways. When I want something, do it halal, do it in a beautiful way. You don't need to go back to your bad just because Ramadan is over. I give you another example. If Allah gives you the chance to go for Hajj, what does Hajj do for you? Hajj, it actually makes you as pure as the day you were born. When you go for Hajj, the person comes back as pure as the day they were born in terms of sin. There is no sin. Your good deeds don't get wiped out. If you go for Hajj, 
your good deeds are not wiped out. Your bad deeds are wiped out. So in that sense, you are as the day you were born. But imagine you go for Hajj, you stopped everything for two, three weeks, four weeks, however long you went, and you tell yourself, when Hajj is over, I can go back to my bad ways. Is that fair? Is that a real Hajj? It's not fair. They say that the accepted Hajj is the Hajj where something changed in your life. Similarly, an accepted Ramadan is that which something changed. Today we are all excited to be here in the masjid, mashallah. May Allah bless the religious affairs and the government of this beautiful country. May Allah Almighty grant us strength and the ability to make use of the beautiful facilities. We are here with lots of excitement. What are you going to take away? Is something going to change in you? Or are you here only for the excitement? If you are here only for the excitement, you have lost. But if you are here to learn something, at least go back with one good habit. At least go back making a promise, Oh Allah, I want to change this. I want to be stronger with my five daily prayers. You know the five pillars of Islam are the most important things that we need to fulfill. The month of Ramadan brings together a lot of them. The month of Ramadan brings together a lot of them. Obviously, Hajj is a pillar of Islam. You cannot do Hajj in Ramadan. Hajj has to be in Dhul Hijjah. Allah has chosen the time. Besides Hajj, the Zakat, it, it can happen in Ramadan. The Salah will happen every day. Your fasting happens and your Shahada is always there. You renew your faith with Allah every time. So Ramadan is a very, very sacred month. Become stronger with the other pillars of Islam and Allah will bless you. Allah will give you joy. A brother sent me a message and told me, do you know what? I've been making dua to Allah. I'm asking him, but still I cannot find a job. I cannot pay my debts. It's so difficult. What is happening? I'm trying so hard. Listen, Allah wants you to continue to try. Allah knows when he will give you. Because sometimes, once he gives you, what happens? We do the same thing we did for Ramadan. Now that I got, I forget. I forget. I forget that I used to call out to Allah. Allah has a verse in the Quran that says, man, when he is in need, he calls out to Allah crying. Once the need is gone, it's as though he never ever called out to Allah. He keeps on doing things as though Allah is not in the equation. May Allah strengthen us. So my brothers and sisters, I'm not going to take up too much of your time this evening. But what I want to tell you is Ramadan is a gift of Allah. It is an opportunity to build your habits. They say habit building. People join courses to build habits. People go and train to build habits. Sometimes we will build a habit because of our boss at work. We, he tells you get at this time, you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do whatever else. We are doing it because he's paying us. He's paying us at the end of the month, right? So we get up very early for the boss. What about for Allah? Are we not going to get up early? I had a young boy. He told me, I did suhoor. Do you know what is suhoor? The sunnah meal, light sunnah meal, pre-fasting. So I said, my son, you did suhoor, very nice. What time did you wake up? He said, four o'clock, where we were, four o'clock. I said, oh, that's good. Did you do Salatul Fajr after that? He says, no, I went to sleep. I said, okay. You got up for one pillar of Islam, but you shot down the other pillar of Islam, which was right with it. How, what did you get? That was a young boy. It's okay, he's still very young. It was not yet compulsory on him. The problem is when adults do that, they stay awake all night sitting. They go to the cafes and they are sitting and what they say, chilling, I'm just chilling, you know? And we're just having tea and whatever else. And you spend the night, mashallah. So someone says, you know what? In Ramadan, I didn't sleep at night. I was awake all night in Ramadan. What were you doing? There was no Quran there. There was no any beneficial thing happening there. So you stay awake all night and just before Salatul Fajr, you go to sleep. What did you gain? Stay awake. If you have stayed awake, you rather stay awake for Fajr. Do the Fajr and then sleep. But I'm very tired. That is from Shaitan. That is from Shaitan, it's a thought that is negative. May Allah Almighty strengthen us. Habit building, keep talking about it. Talk about it to your family members. Talk about it to your colleagues. Talk about it to everyone. We want to build habits. Ramadan, I want to get into the habit of doing what? I want to dress appropriately. I want to get into the habit of reading Quran. That brings me to another very interesting point. Is this not the month of the Quran? 
شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن month of Ramadan the month of revelation of the Quran surely you should be reading the Quran every day build your habit set a time whether it is just before iftar just after or a little bit later or early morning or before Fajr you need to read some Quran connect with it build your habit if you don't push yourself you are not going to be able to achieve push yourself and do it one day, two days, three days, continue for 30 whole days and inshallah, it will become easier for you because you trained yourself. What did you do? You built your habit. You built your habit through training. So if you are not going to push yourself, it's not going to be easy. Moments ago, I asked the young boy, are you memorizing the Quran? He said, yes. I said, how many have you memorized? He said, two Jews. I said, son, don't give up, keep going. Because it is not easy if you don't push yourself, you will not achieve anything. The silly thing is we push ourselves for worldly items, but we don't push ourselves for that which connects us with Allah. In a few moments, a few years, a few days, a few weeks, you and I are going to return to Allah. People will forget that we existed. Look, how many of those who passed away do you remember? You don't even remember a lot of them. Very few. Where are they? They are now wishing and hoping that they could have come back so that they can do good deeds and then go back again. So we are awake. When you go, you are alone. If you visited the graveyard, it's creepy. Who's there? One of your loved ones. More than one of your loved ones. Where have they gone? They have returned to Allah. The lesson is I need to understand I'm going to also return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I am going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surely put something, do something, your salah, and so on. That verse I read, Sari'u ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Towards the forgiveness of your Lord. Ask Allah's forgiveness. You are a human. Sometimes you might end up committing a sin because you are a human being. Quickly turn to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me, strengthen me, make me strong. Oh Allah, help me that I don't do this again. Ask Allah and Allah will open your doors. But if you don't want to ask Allah and you are not bothered because you are young, you are strong, you are energetic, may Allah Almighty forgive us. We cannot allow that to happen to us. At this moment, Allah Almighty tells us to fast from the age of puberty. If he wanted, he could have said, you know what? Wait until you grow old. When you think you're going to die, you can start fasting. In fact, when you're old, Allah Almighty says, if you cannot fast, no problem, you don't have to fast. You see that? It's the other way around. When you are old and you cannot manage to fast because of sickness or if you have a travel or something, Allah says, no problem, you can do it another day. It's okay. When you are young, there is no excuse. Allah wants to polish you. Allah wants to develop you and make you grow. So I need this evening from this beautiful masjid, I want everyone to make a promise. The promise is we connect with the Quran. Is that a good promise? Alhamdulillah, I'm so happy to hear that. Connect with the Quran. The Ummah needs you and I. We are members of the Ummah. We are one beautiful family. All those who are here, connect with the Quran. Even if it means one verse, two verses. If you are traveling, sometimes in the motor vehicle or somewhere, put on the Quran and read along with it. Read along with it. Before you know it, you will be able to read many, many verses of the Quran. Look, I don't wish to talk about songs and so on besides a quick example many people they turn on the songs and what happens before they know it they are singing songs who taught you the song i just heard it you cannot have heard it once you must have heard it again and again and again and now you know all these songs okay let's put that on one side what did you do for allah did you hear the verses of the quran again and again and again wallahi if you did you would know it off by heart and you are able to read. When the Imam is reading, you say, wow, I know these verses. How do you know them? Because I heard them since I was young. It's repetition, repeating again and again. What you do, you can choose quarter juice or even one page, one page a day and put it on replay. If you are traveling for an hour, usually it happens, people travel for an hour. One whole hour you are listening to that page again and again and again and again. Next day, another page. This is called being concerned to develop a beautiful habit. When you connect with the Quran, everything else becomes easy because you become the ummah of the Quran. But if you don't want to connect with the word of Allah, 
all the instructions are in that word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where did you get that from? You got it from the Quran. The Quran told you to follow the sunnah. That's why you are following the sunnah. If you don't know the Quran, how will you follow the sunnah? How will you recognize Allah? So let's give Allah Almighty, inshallah. Let's give him his, the status that he actually is upon. He is the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the one in control of your existence and mine, and the one in control of entire creation. At least we put our head on the ground for him five times a day, by the will of Allah. So that is another promise. The first one was connecting with the Quran. We promised it, right? The second one, connecting with our five daily prayers. We promise? May Allah make it easy for us. The, the youngsters, inshallah, five salah, get up for fajr, you will succeed. You will succeed. If challenges come in your life, when you have Allah with you, you recognize the challenge as a gift. You are still a happy person. It's okay. Because you have Allah with you. You lost a job, alhamdulillah. You got another one, alhamdulillah. Someone else, something happened. Someone smashed into your motor vehicle, alhamdulillah. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Why alhamdulillah? Because something worse could have happened. There was a brother who told me, you, you said to say alhamdulillah for everything. You know, I have a speeding fine, which is so big. How can I say alhamdulillah? I said, who told you to speed in the first place? Who told you to speed in the first place? And I gave him an example. I said, you see, you are so worried about paying the penalty of speeding. So you are slow after today, right? What about paying the penalty of overstepping the boundaries of Allah? What about that? What about overstep? That we are not worried. When that payment comes, Allah says, <laughs> On the day of judgment, the one who has wronged and he's an oppressor and he did, he was sinful. He would wish that he had the whole world and whatever it, he had, whatever it holds, to give as a ransom, to give as a payment so that he can come out. Allah says, it won't be accepted from him. It won't be. You're worried about a fine, one fine. It's okay. At least next time you can calm down and slow down a little bit. May Allah Almighty make it easy. So my brothers and sisters, here we have a wonderful month of Ramadan ahead of us. Still, we are relatively in the first portion of Ramadan. We are still on a high of energy. Keep it going. You see, it's amazing. If you think of the gift of Allah, Laylatul Qadr is said to be most likely in which part of Ramadan, beginning or end? Imagine if it was in the beginning, what would happen? Everyone would just have Laylatul Qadr and after that you are free. Khalas, you are, go you are gone and there's nothing happening. I'm now prepared for ending of Ramadan. Allah's gift and favor, the divine knowledge of Allah, He kept Laylatul Qadr towards the end, most likely, and He didn't give us the time. He told us, look, try, maybe this date, maybe this. Imagine if he told us that it is only on the 27th, khalas. If Allah told that to us, no one would come to the masjid. 27 full, 26 empty, 28 empty. Imagine, because Allah, through his mercy, he didn't want us to know. He wants us to say, you know, you start Ramadan, enjoy the fasting, build the climax, you come. The last 10 nights are the most powerful nights. You do more Qiyamul Layl. You can do more acts of worship and more and more and more. And we are going to give you Laylatul Qadr and we are going to forgive your sins. And then you come out of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. That's the favor of Allah. The young boys, there are many of them here this evening and I'm happy to see you guys. Mashallah. Very good to see you. May Allah bless you all. Mashallah. Many of them are into football. Agreed? Mashallah. So, the most exciting part of the match is the beginning or the end? Some are saying the beginning. Okay. So basically, if there is no goal that is scored, there is 80 minutes already done, 10 minutes remaining. Now you are on edge. What's happening? You are screaming, shouting for your team to score a goal. This one score a goal. Imagine a goal is scored and everyone is actually so happy. And then the referee says it was offside. How do you feel? How do you feel? Subhanallah. So. That's why in Ramadan, sometimes we are scoring one or two goals, but we are offside. You see, meaning you are swearing, cheating, lying, deceiving, committing other sins. The Prophet says, be careful. Watch what you say. It's very important. 
من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به والجهل فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه Whoever is not going to watch what comes out of their mouths they, they utter falsehood, they bear false witness, they utter bad words and so on then they should know that Allah does not need the fact that you are staying away from your food and drink that means you're staying away from food and drink who do you think is going to benefit from it? It's you. But if you don't want to holistically fast in the correct way, you've wasted your time. A reward, what reward did you get? So towards the end of Ramadan, take it more seriously. Inshallah. May Allah Almighty grant us ease and goodness and open our doors. I want to tell you another habit. Another habit that will be built in this beautiful month of Ramadan is to frequent the masjid, to go to the masjid. In Dubai alone, there are approximately 3,000 masjids. Do you know that? Many people are just looking at me. Are you sure? Go and check. Google it. How many masjids? 3,000. Check it. Maybe I'm, I'm, I don't know the exact figure, but I checked it once and there was 2,000 something. I'm presuming, inshallah, there probably is more now. How many masjids have you been into? Imagine 2,000, 3,000 masjids in one city. How fortunate are you? Are we not going to use the month of Ramadan to build the habit to go to the masjid? Come on. We came to this masjid, the house of Allah. The sound is amazing. The aircon is amazing. Everything is beautiful. Everything is superb. There are people who put it up. You are using it and you will get Jannah and they will get Jannah. The problem is some of us are sleeping at home. Subhanallah. Sleeping at home. So Ramadan is the month of the masjid as well. Maybe you didn't ever hear that before. Ramadan is the month of the masjid. Go to the masjid. One might argue that, well, my whole life is supposed to be for the masjid. It's true. But if you are not used to it, Ramadan is supposed to make you build your habit. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. Can I give you one more habit to build? Okay. At home, we have parents or family members to develop your relation with your parents and your siblings or your children or your family members is a very great act of worship. Very great act of worship. When you go home, say something good to your mother, no matter how old you are. If she is far away, phone her now and again, just to ask her, how are you doing? Mashallah. Sometimes she might be a little bit upset. She might shout at you, depending if you are little kids here, as we can see, they might say things, learn to help. Learn to give a hand. The Prophet ﷺ gave a hand. What I am telling you today is from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Your parents, you owe them so much. Allah chose them for you. If Ramadan is not going to make you build a beautiful relation with your parents, no matter who they are and where they are, then surely we have wasted the month of Ramadan. So that is another habit we need to develop. What did I say earlier? If you don't push yourself, you won't achieve. Whoever works hard and pushes themselves, they will achieve results. If you don't, there is no achievement of anything. So inshallah, we push ourselves to do this. You want one more habit to build? Let me tell you something. No, no, Ramadan is not a month to develop the habit of taking photos. No. Ramadan is not the month to develop the habit to taking photos. Not at all. May Allah bless you all. But Ramadan is a month where you see, respecting other people is definitely a sign of closeness to Allah. Why? Because Allah made them. You are in this city of Dubai. There are more than 200 nationalities in this city. There is an opportunity for you to interact, to meet, to greet, to find out, to offer respect and courtesy to everyone more than anyone else. So are you going to be courteous and kind to the people when you come to... Mashallah. There was a brother, just as we got up for Salat al Taraweeh, there was a brother standing here saying, Sheikh, tell the people to make space for me because I, there was no space and they are not making place. Did you see the brother? But I kept quiet, but I wanted to tell him, brother, why did you come late? Right? Everyone came very early. How can I push them away? You came by Asr? May, may Allah Almighty bless you. You came from Doha? Or oh, 4 o'clock? Okay. So next time I will come from Fajr. May Allah bless you all. So sometimes we think that we are entitled to something and people are doing wrong to us without realizing my brother, I love you so much. But the truth be told, you came late. That's why you don't have a space. May Allah Almighty make it easy. So 
this is why I say if you don't push yourself, you won't achieve. Push yourself. And inshallah, everything will happen. We were talking of respecting people. Learn to respect others. The people who work for you, they work with you. The others who are around, you see them on the street. Please go easy on them. You're a Muslim. You believe in Allah. You believe in the day of account. Hisab. Hisab means account. Don't talk to the people with respect. Offer them a good word. Say nice things. Don't say bad words. Don't look at some nationality or some race and think they are not good. I am good. Don't do that. That is not Islam. In Islam, we are all equal. In Islam, we are all equal. So talk to people and offer them good respect and Allah Almighty will bless you. May Allah make our fasting easy. May Allah make our standing in salah easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and grant us ease and goodness. And may Allah Almighty truly, truly grant us Jannah with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.